Hi everybody and thanks for joining us for another piano video. We're here at Mirroring Pianos in Oakville, Canada, just outside of Toronto. My name is Stu Harrison. And in the video today, we're going to be talking about what you should be looking for in a used piano. If you're a parent or student or somebody in need of an instrument, whether it's an upright or a grand, and you're on the hunt for a used instrument for some cost savings, and you'd like to know, what should I be looking for? What are the red flags that should send me in a different direction? What are the things that should be uh, causing me to pick up the phone to call a piano technician. I'm gonna give you a few uh, quick tips uh, on things uh, that'll let you know whether the instrument uh, is a good candidate to continue uh, looking into or whether it's something that you should probably pass on uh, and keep on your search. So thank you so much for joining us. Let's get started with this upright piano right here. So it's important to remember that any piano, upright or grand or even digital for that matter, is a machine. This is not the same as a violin or a cello uh, or a guitar or even like a brass instrument where there's a relatively small number of moving parts and you have a lot of natural materials that are maturing and curing over time. Uh, so the, the important thing to get in your head is pianos never ever get better with age. The only exception to that might be for the first few years when an instrument's opening up and the action's getting broken in, uh, you could make the argument that a piano four or five years into its ownership is a better playing instrument than one on the day you got it, but 50 years down the road, 100 years down the road, that instrument is never ever going to be as good as the day it left the factory. There are over 6,000 parts in that instrument, and a lot of those parts are undergoing serious stresses uh, and forces that are breaking down those natural materials over time and they just never really improve. Uh, they eventually just deteriorate, disintegrate, um, and stop performing as they were supposed to. So that's really the first thing I'd like you to keep in mind is used pianos really generally never are going to be better uh, than their new equivalents. Um, all other things considered equal. Having said that, here are a few mechanical things that are important to watch for that'll let you know whether a used piano has possibly been overused, abused, or just under-maintained. And we're gonna start right at the very first part of where you connect with this instrument, which is the keys. So, uh, obviously there are some aesthetic considerations. You can look at a key and you can see whether the key is damaged, uh, whether it's chipped, uh, whether some of the keys are stained or perhaps they've yellowed over time. But one of the most important things you can do to quickly check whether the instrument's in decent mechanical condition is actually to uh, press the key from side to side and see how much play there is. Now there is supposed to be some play, even on the best pianos that are fresh from the factory, there should be some play. And I would say it's somewhere between one to two millimeters that you should be able to push the key back and forth to the left and the right. That is, that's the correct uh, amount of looseness with that bushing. However, you should not be able to press the key from one side and have it come, have it touch the next key. That's one good way to know whether those bushings are worn out or not. So you press, you know, key down and then you're pushing up against the key to its right or to its left, are you able to press that key so it touches the very next key? And if the answer is yes, there's a good chance that those bushings are worn out, and that is going to mean that when you're playing the instrument, it's gonna feel very loose, your sense of control is gonna be a lot lower, and if you wanted to improve upon that, you may have to embark on a somewhat costly repair of either replacing the bushings or the sort of the cheap version of improving that is, is actually twisting those front pins. So that's the first thing to check. Second thing to check would be take a look at the level of the keys and are there a lot of white notes or black notes that are sitting at kind of different heights? Are they uneven in height? This is not necessarily an expensive problem, but it is a sign that the instrument's probably not been maintained very well uh, and it needs a what's called a regulation. Uh, and regulation is essentially a term that refers to resetting all of the moving parts in the piano so that the keys are sitting at the right height, the hammers are striking at the right point in the string. It's basically resetting or realigning all of the moving parts in the instrument. And regulation can take a couple of hours, or if it's something that's really significantly out of sync, possibly a couple of days uh, worth of work. 
So we've got the keys to the side, that was the first thing to check. Next thing to check is, of course, uh, are you talking about an even uh, top of the key face or are there a lot of white notes and black notes that seem to be uneven compared to one another? Third thing that you could check, which is a really easy visual thing to see, is you're going to actually look at the tip of the hammers. Now, it is normal to see uh, some level of grooving. So in other words, if you've got a hammer which is hitting three strings, it's perfectly okay if you see um, uh, kind of three lines in the hammer and there's a, l a small amount of indentation. That's normal, that's not really going to be inhibiting the tone of the instrument at all. However, if you see the hammers and to the touch, they're extremely hard, like you can't even tell that it's felt anymore, and you see that there are, it almost looks like cuts into the hammer, uh, you know, that go in by possibly several millimeters. Uh, this is a sign of either a badly worn hammer or possibly a hammer that's completely at the end of its life. Um, that means that the felt has really become impacted, so it's gonna be a very bright, very metallic tinny sound. Uh, and possibly uh, that the hammer has been uh, treated with chemicals over the course of the year and can't really be resuscitated. Um, you can't needle it anymore um, or voice it or there's no felt left to sand it down. So um, you don't have to uh, you know, make those specific determinations as a buyer yourself, but an easy way to tell kind of the canary in the cage is how deep are those grooves? And if they look like they're really, really deep, it's a good chance, again, that that hammer is either possibly at the end of its life or it needs a major, major uh, voicing. So those are three really easy things that you as a customer can see from the front of the piano uh, without digging too, uh, too far deeply. Let's move on to the strings. Um, now the strings are, there's two types of strings. You can see that there are these uh, copper wound strings sort of in the bottom or the lower portion of the piano. And then you've got these steel strings on the top. Now these are metals. And so of course metal over time very, very slowly uh, corrodes depending on the type of metal. Um, may become a little bit uh, you know, pitted as some of that corrosion starts to wear away at the steel. Uh, the copper may be very, very dark. Uh, possibly a little bit of green as that copper has oxidized uh, over time. So strings and hammers and bushings are all parts of the instrument that are never really supposed to last forever. Uh, and it's very normal over the course of the piano's lifetime to have to replace strings and hammers and bushings. So if you have an appetite for that type of work and you are already used to owning things that require that type of rejuvenation, this may not be an issue at all and you might actually enjoy the process. If you're looking for the piano to kind of be something where you buy it and you kind of just put it in your room and you get your annual tunings or semi-annual tunings and that's kind of all you want to dive into, then these are red flags uh, that should probably steer you away from one particular piano and towards another used instrument or perhaps a new instrument if, if the budget allows for it. So we've talked about the keys, we've talked about the keys being level, we've talked about the hammers, and of course uh, we're just uh, now finished talking about looking at the strings and just visually seeing are they covered in any sort of a corrosion, have they um, you know, uh, discolored at all, uh, can you see that those strings are just really uh, worn down and, and looking rusty. Now on the back of the piano, Here's the one uh, that, uh, there's a bit of mythology around this, but there's also a bit of truth. Uh, and this is the soundboard. So the soundboard is the piece of wood that really generates the majority of the tone that you hear when you play an instrument. And on an upright piano like this, it's very easy for you to see the soundboard from the back. So it's this large piece of wood uh, that is on the other side connected to the bridges and the strings. Uh, and it kind of acts like a big speaker cone. You've probably heard, or somebody's said to you, if you, you know, were talking to a friend or talking to a teacher, you were thinking about buying a used piano, make sure that you don't buy a used piano that has a cracked soundboard. Um, or, you know, if it has the cracked soundboard, run away, and uh, all of these very dramatic uh, statements about, about the death of a piano 
uh, if it has a cracked soundboard. Um, cracks in soundboard are not universally bad or uh, you know, life ending for a piano. It can be, and so that's where a lot of that alarm comes from. If the crack crosses uh, a rib or the crack is causing a lot of buzzing uh, when uh, you are playing the piano, then it's very expensive and very problematic to try and fix that crack. So the safe thing to do is if you see a crack and you don't even want to get into it, um, then you move on to another piano. And the cracks are fairly easy to see. A, a good soundboard crack, when you're looking at the back, will be a fairly uh, straight, you know, usually dark line where you can see that the wood has kind of separated. Um, and a particularly bad crack, you could easily get like a credit card uh, in between those two pieces of wood. But if it's a piano that otherwise you really like, you're playing the instrument, you're enjoying it musically, um, and particularly if you're buying it from uh, a dealer that you have a good feeling with or there's a past relationship, there's a decent amount of trust, and you can talk openly about the soundboard, uh, and there you're feeling like there's a good flow both ways, this is not necessarily a deal killer. Um, if the crack is not causing buzzing, if the crack is not causing an obvious loss of tuning stability, and the crack does not cross any uh, ribs on the soundboard, which it typically doesn't, um, then this may just be essentially an aesthetic problem with the piano. No doubt it is gonna affect the resale value if you in turn buy it and want to resell it. Again, you're gonna run into exactly the same discussion that you'd be having with the dealer or the seller at that moment as well. So it's always gonna be a source of concern, but if you're buying this to have it as a musical instrument um, and it's not causing those issues, uh, and you like everything else about the piano, including the price, um, then don't let this be an absolute deal killer, um, but obviously you do want to investigate it um, thoroughly and make sure that you're completely in the know. So there are five very practical, very uh, kind of uh, visually obvious ways that you as a buyer uh, can tell whether an instrument is worth investigating. Um, but there's a sixth, far more relevant thing uh, that you can do as a buyer to, to evaluate one of these used pianos, which is sit down and play it. Because any instrument that's in really good condition, whether it's 100 years old or whether it's brand new, should be giving you a few things that are universal across every instrument, um, regardless of what kind of tone you like and regardless of, of what music you play. And that is sit down and see whether the instrument behaves the same from key to key and whether it's producing a relatively uniform tone, whether that's a darker tone or a brighter tone. You know, does the bass have somewhat of a similar character to the mid-range and the treble? Um, are there notes that are really wildly uh, sticking out or is everything, uh, you know, fairly even? Um, do you like how the piano responds to you? In other words, if you're sitting there and you're just playing freely, uh, do you enjoy kind of the dynamic range it gives you and the, and the range of tones and colors that it gives you. And of course, if the answer to that is, uh, yes, it's giving me all of these musical things that you like, then that's when you dig into those other five items and you find out whether this is a worth a purchase or not. If you don't like playing it, then it doesn't matter how good any of those other things are you're probably not gonna get the instrument. Good luck with your shopping. I really hope that this video has given you some uh, additional things to consider when you're out there. Uh, and once you've found an instrument that you like and it's passed all of those tests, of course, you can take the further step of contacting a local technician and having them give an independent assessment of the instrument as well. Or if you're dealing with a local dealer that you trust and has a really strong reputation, you could always have them produce a written signed assessment of the instrument for your records as well. Happy shopping, good luck, and we'll see you back for another video here at Miriam Pianos. Thanks so much for watching.